CataractCoach.com, expanding a Bay Cough Phagic Eye Well and performing M6 cataract surgery at the same time. Now, this is an angle-supported IOL meant to treat high degrees of myopia. You can see those arms there. They're mounted or supported in the angle there. And this patient was highly, highly myopic, probably minus 12, 15 or more. And you can see the surgeon is going to make a larger M6 tunnel. Why? Well, this lens is rigid. You can't actually break it or fold it in half. Now, that's you about RetinaRounds.com, our new channel. It is amazing. It's already launched. You're missing out by not following the videos. New one every single day. I promise you're going to love it. Check it out here on YouTube. And, of course, RetinaRounds.com. Follow for the daily email. Now, cleaning up here. The, the cautery is coming up. There it is. Get a little bit of cautery, not too much. And you've exposed the conjunctiva is pulled back. You've got the sclera exposed. Time for an M6 incision. Now, you know the trick for an M6 incision. you got to have it trapezoidal shaped. There you go. Very nice. And a long tunnel length. Remember, the S is like meaning shelved, the shelved incisions. There's a frown. Now, the frown's going to give you even better sealing and a little bit more astigmatically neutral. And again, using this crescent-type blade to dissect, dissect, dissect. And look, you're still not in the anterior chamber. That's splitting the cornea here. So it's a long tunnel length incision. And you need a wide incision because, again, this lens is made of a rigid plastic that you cannot fold, you cannot cut. So there we go. Now you've got the tunnel in the clear cornea, and you can now enter the eye, and you remove this lens in whole. And this comes out pretty easily. There's the incision. Again, trapezoidal, wider on the inside than it is on the outside. Seven millimeters is good to remove this fake lens, but also this is a relatively soft nucleus, so it can come out very easily. If you had a very, very dense nucleus, you may need a little bit larger uh, opening, a little wider. Now, here comes the paracentesis. There's on one side. And then let's see on the other side, make another pair maybe, yep. So typically we do a bimanual IA to remove cortex in these type of cases. And now here, put some anesthetic agent, get that pupil dilated. Look at that fake lens, that's so interesting. So now finally, enter the anterior chamber at this point, and nice and easy, and then you can widen up the incision. Look how long that tunnel length is. It's definitely going to seal very well. And so here, viscoase can help you elevate that lens, get it out of the eye, Again, opening the M6 tunnel to its uh, wide points. And then you can just grab this with forceps, this IOL, and remove it and save that in a museum. This is an ancient lens. This Bakoff IOL, fake lens. I've never even seen one in person. And so pulling it out of the eye nice and easy. You know, other companies even uh, tried to make fake lenses for the anterior chamber too. Alcon made an Alcon Cache lens, which is the same thing, made of uh, the acrylic material designed to be placed in the anterior chamber, and they did some U.S. FDA trials, eventually deciding not to release it on the U.S. market. As you know, the ch complication is patients who get these faking IOLs, especially anterior chamber faking IOLs, can have corneal endothelial cell loss at a few percent per year, sometimes even more than that. But even posterior chamber faking lenses are associated with slow but steady endothelial cell loss. The eye is finicky. It doesn't want anything in there. Now, here's the nucleus. You can bring that thing up. It looks pretty soft. You probably just suck this out with a phaco probe. Another option here is to put a suture in and split the incision, and then you got it smaller, and then you can go in the phaco probe to one side of the incision. But here we go, just aspirating this nucleus out again, pretty soft, comes out easy. And now you can use the bimanual IA to clean up the lens cortex. Beautifully done here. And again, at this point, you're going to put in a monofocal lens, probably, and you're going to, uh, it's going to be a high power, uh, actually, high myopia for the patient, so a very low power lens. So let's see, putting viscoelastic inside the eye, fill that capsular bag, it looks great, fantastic. And let's see, what's the lens? There you go, Alcon 3P, zero diopter. Now, should you leave the patient a faking? No, always put a lens, why? Because it's a barrier. If you don't put a lens, you'll instantly get PCO. And then when you yag the PCO, guess what happens? Now you get vitreous coming to the anterior chamber. Yep, don't do it. If you have a patient who needs a zero power lens, always implant the lens, don't leave them a faking. Now here comes the zero power lens being delivered very gently in the capsular bag. You got a nice rexus too. It should go in beautifully. And remember, don't aim for dead on plano. Let these patients be just a little myopic. Minus a half would be a blessing. Here at the end of the case, sealing up the incisions. Look at that. The scleral tunnel is so long, it seals on its own. So hydrate those stromal uh, of the side ports. And now probably just bring the conch down. And there you go. Beautiful case. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you sending the video in. Now, check out RetinaRounds.com, our sister channel, and then go to CataractCoach.com and submit your video. We want to see it.